honor this day, memorable in the annals of the Royal Air Force, came the great lady who was queen when the Royal Air Force was formed out of the union of two great services. Her son, the Duke of Gloucester, was accompanied by his Duchess, Air Chief Commandant of the Women's Royal Air Force. Ill health prevented the attendance of the King, who served with the RAF at its foundation, but with the Queen came Princess Elizabeth to make the presentation on his behalf. Together with Princess Margaret, they went to the Distinguished Visitor's Dais, where Queen Mary received greetings on her 84th birthday. It'll be remembered that her son, the Duke of Kent, lost his life on service with the RAF during the war. The Prime Minister was among those present. With the Royal Party in position, the Parade Commander, Air Commodore Waite, ordered the Royal Salute. Then out of the clouds came four wings of 24 vampires and meteors in a fly past planned by the AOC and C Fighter Command, Air Marshal Sir Basil Embry. bad luck which seems to haunt RAF flypasts, the weather was now fast becoming bad and flying at 280 knots, stepped down to 1,200 feet through the clouds over the heart of London, was no joyride. What would have been a thrilling spectacle for the great crowd became a hazardous operation only partly visible. Fly passed over, Princess Elizabeth, accompanied by Air Chief Marshal the Honourable Sir Rafe Cochrane, Vice Chief of Air Staff, began her inspection, prelude to the most spectacular ground op the Royal Air Force has ever laid on in London. This was the Royal Air Force on parade in the heart of the Commonwealth capital, and all concerned had strained every nerve to make it worthy of the great young service. Undeterred by the weather, a large crowd had come to Hyde Park for this great day in Royal Air Force annals. In three long lines of four squadrons, the representative squadrons stood facing the saluting base, each command under the eye of its AOC and C. Bomber Command, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Lloyd. Flying Training, Air Marshal Sir Hugh Wormsley. Transport Command, Air Marshal Sir Aubrey Elwood. Land Rover passes the Royal Air Force Regiment and enters the second lane, where the first group consists of apprentices and boys. Home Command, Air Marshal Sir Robert Foster. Maintenance Command, Air Marshal Sir Thomas Warren Brown. Fighter Command, Air Marshal Sir Basil Embry. Back 
back along the third row, past Coastal Command, Air Marshal Sir Charles Steele. Technical training, Air Marshal Sir John Whitworth Jones. Number 90 group. Finally, the Princess inspected the Women's Royal Air Force. For on this great day, every branch of the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom took part. For those who fly, and those who keep them flying. The centrepiece of the great occasion drew near. The presentation of the first King's Colour to the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom. At this solemn moment, the storm broke and blinding rain swept the parade. The escort squadron, 180 officers and men representing every command in the United Kingdom and number 90 group, formed a hollow square. The King's colour was placed on the drums and Air Commodore Waite reported all was ready for the consecration by the Chaplain-in-Chief of the Royal Air Force. It is in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. We ask you to bid God's blessing on this colour. We are ready so to do. To the glory of God and as a symbol of our fellowship with him and with each other, we consecrate this colour in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. On bended knee, Flying Officer Malarkey received the King's colour from the Aeris Presumptive. The colour is sky blue with the round L bottom right and the Union Jack top left, with the crown over the Royal Monogram in the centre. Then, while the great parade of 2,500 officers and men listened, Princess Elizabeth, sheltered only by a large umbrella, delivered the King's message. I have been asked by the King to read to you the address which His Majesty was to have made this afternoon. And at the same time, he would like me to say how very sorry he is not to be able to be with you in person. I am very glad to present my colour today to the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom. Your service was formed during the reign of my father, King George V, and I myself have had the closest ties with the Royal Air Force since its formation in 1918. I have watched with the keenest admiration how it has grown up from those early days to prove in every way worthy of its place alongside the older services. During the dark days of 1940, when my people stood alone to defend the cause of freedom, the Royal Air Force played the foremost part in turning the tide which led to ultimate victory. Your duties at all times call for high qualities of endurance and skill. 
to which must be added the dash and zest of youth, the courage and determination which have marked your achievements in war have been matched in their proud heroism by many feats of daring and enterprise that your service has been called upon to perform in times of peace. The great traditions of the Royal Air Force have been established through unflinching devotion to duty. And I am deeply conscious of the many gallant young lives which have been laid down, not only in conflict with the enemy, but in facing the many hazards which are in the very nature of your ordinary duties. I now hand over this king's color, confident that you will honor it as the emblem of your achievements and the shrine of your service traditions. Let it be a reminder to you of the devotion and sacrifices of your predecessors and a symbol of the trust which I repose in the Royal Air Force. With this symbol of the King's trust in the Royal Air Force, the Flying Officer Mulaki rejoined his color escort, the Flight Sergeants Oreo and Tonks. Born in the darkest moments of a great war, in little more than a generation, the Royal Air Force, through the service and devotion of the highest and the lowest, has built a tradition that is the envy of the world. The mark of this great achievement is the King's colour, given only to those who have been tested and found worthy in the nation's cause. Then, for the first time, the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom lowered the King's colour in salute to the King. at the Quick March. Reforming, the great company then advanced in review order, completing the parade. After the royal salute, the parade commander called for three cheers for His Majesty. Three cheers for His Majesty the King. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip! Hip, hip. Now the march past of the great company in column of route, the spectacular highlight of the parade. Drilled to perfection, many of them young in the service, the men marched proudly past with perfect precision, despite the treacherous going of the sodden turf, bringing to a close this great occasion.